listening to the Hollywood Boulevard podcast. Hey, everybody, and uh, welcome back to another season of. Oh my God! All right, hold on. Let me let me mess. <laughs> Outtake. Hold on one second. Uh, I am completely uh, out of it right now. All right. Hollywood hey, Boulevard, every- take two. Hey, everybody, and welcome back to another season of Hollywood Boulevard podcast. I'm your host, Jonathan Moody, and I've got my co-host here. I've got Alfred Crane. How are you doing, Alfred? Great. And you? I'm doing fantastic. And uh, we've got Joe Turk here as well. How are you doing, Joe? Doing great. Ready for another season. Ready for another season. We got a fun one. This, this uh, We decided um, that we we're going to do a all-80s uh, themed, uh, you know, season. So get ready for that. It, it doesn't have to be action films, though. The first few might be action films or so. I don't know, but at least the first two I know are sort of action stuff. Um, but it's, you know, just eighties, you know, if you want to do an eighties comedy, eighties, you know, horror eighties, whatever, um, feel free. Um, and we're going to, uh, and we'll have hopefully I I'm hoping for nine episodes this season. And then 10, like nine of us, you know, of us doing it. And then 10, like the, a wrap around, uh, wrap up, you know, episode where we just talk about the episodes that we had. So it's going to be a fun season. I'm really looking forward to it. And to kick it off, um, I know that Prey just came out. I actually haven't seen it yet. Um, it. Yeah, it's just I've been so busy and uh, just haven't had a chance. But I, I do want to. Um, but I kind of want to I want to go down a predator rabbit hole and start watching all of them because I've only seen part one and two, you know, and I haven't even seen like Alien versus Predator or and Predators. Or... That's not exactly a bad thing. <laughs> so am I the only one that's seen the new one, I guess? Yeah. Have you seen all of them? Yes, I've seen all of them. But to be honest, um, some of them are kind of, uh, well, you know, go down the rabbit hole for those. But, yeah, I have seen the new, newest one, Prey, as well. This was actually the one that's been the longest I hadn't, hadn't seen. So, um, so yeah, when you rewatch it, were you happy? Yes, <laughs> most definitely, <laughs> most definitely. It, you know, honestly, I was like looking at this movie because I was watching it on Hulu. By the way, I believe almost every Predator movie is on Hulu because Fox is uh, owned by Disney now, and Disney owns Hulu. So they put a, and I think they were talking about putting them on like Disney Plus or something. Um, at some point um, I don't know if that's true or not um, but I think they are trying to put a bunch of R-rated stuff onto Disney plus um, to get them more traction for it um, but anyway I watched it on and Darby are good on the little people it just don't seem to go well together it you know what I would watch a double feature predator and Darby O'Gill, <laughs> you know like that seems like a nice you know um, what is it? Uh, St. Patrick's Day, you know, thing because they're they're both green. You know, very... versus the Predator. <laughs> Darby O'Gill versus the Predator. Um, Pollyanna versus the Predator. What? Pollyanna. Pollyanna versus the Predator. I don't know, man. Uh, you know, um, Mr. Boogity versus the Predator. I don't know. I don't know I, who. I was, th- I, I was thinking something like um, Apple Dumpling Gang meets the Predator or something. I was like just thinking that, Joe. That's all. That would be awesome. <laughs> You guys, you guys are you know, the Knotts same age, so I love it. Is it Don Knotts? Yeah. You said, yeah, Don Knotts and Tim Conway. <laughs> That'd be amazing. Yeah, yeah that, that. I don't know. We'll we'll see if that. You know, you're giving Disney ideas right now. You're throwing it out there. They're they're going to be started thinking. Mm, I wonder if that's a good <laughs> idea. Uh, uh, Predator, I think, could kill a lot of. Uh, you know, a lot of people. Um, in fact, yeah, we'll we'll get into to how freaking tough this, you know, just this one predator was. Um in the Dark movie. Horse comic world, it's amazing how many crossovers they have Batman versus Predator, um, Robocop versus Predator, um, Aliens versus Predator, of course. So if they would have followed those those for the movies, it would have been awesome. If they had followed like in the if they if they had followed the comics in the, the Dark movies. Horse comics um story at least they were fantastic. The Predator Aliens was Predator for that amazing for sure. Um, I've never read them, but I know I know like RoboCop did. I knew of them. Like I knew RoboCop fought um 
Uh, I think even to the Terminator. I know the Terminator fought yeah, Robocop. Yeah, they did Terminator versus Aliens versus Predator. They went crazy when they had like three or four of them. Like, <laughs> wow. That's really funny. Like, you know, like the, were they ever like looking around going, that, that looks like Dutch. You know? Yeah, right. <laughs> it looks just like Dutch. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Dutch, Dutch, Dutch the T-1000. Yeah, Dutch the T-1000. Um, so yeah, so I, I picked this uh, this movie because when uh, Alfred picked his, and we'll mention at the end, we'll actually mention what what's next um, at the end. But when uh, Alfred picked his movie, I was like, "Yep, yep, I gotta do, I gotta do like we gotta do '80s month, and I gotta do Predator because of Prey, which is so funny. Predator, Predator versus Prey. You know, I'm surprised that." Uh, Freaking, um, you know what is it? Uh, uh, Asylum hasn't done that yet, you know, right. because that's just. I mean, they. I mean, it, I, I don't know. Predator is that trademarked? I, I would. Well, the idea I'm sure is, but maybe not the name itself. I, yeah, I, I don't think know. you can trademark the name the, Predator. The, you know, but the, con- but the concept, I guess, it'd have to be. They'd, I'm sure the asylum could come up with some different. Well, they did Alien name. versus Hunter, if you recall, Joe, because we did that oh. review. Remember, we watched yeah. that. You, me, and John Ward watched that movie, and ugh. Uh, so I wouldn't be surprised if they did Predator versus Prey, and you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Um, why not? You know, and it just, I mean, I, you know, Asylum is Asylum. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Um, so. This movie I hadn't seen forever. And when I was watching on Hulu, I was like, damn, this looks really freaking good. Just on my regular TV. I wasn't even watching on my 4K, you know, Mm -hmm. like I was like, this looks really, really good. I wonder what it would look like on a 4K, like, uh, you know, uh, does anybody have the 4K of this? No, I just have the regular. I just have a Blu-ray. I watched it on Blu-ray last night. Um. So not 4K, but I can imagine that the Blu-ray looked good, so I can only imagine the 4K what it would do. You have the blue. Which Blu-ray do you have of it? Um, it's it's um. Well, it was part of a three-pack with um. Okay. Uh, Schwarzenegger Commando and Terminator as well, but it's its own disc, and it has all the extras. It has like a documentary, and it has um it, it, uh, a bunch of commentaries and stuff like that. So it's not like a stripped-down Blu-ray. Uh, so it, it seems I... like it's a good. Uh, I have Predator and Predators 2 on the same one. I don't know if they're, I don't think they are separate. I think they're one disc, exactly. you know? Yeah. Yeah. So it had its own disc. So, I mean, and, and I started watching a few minutes of the documentary. It was a good half hour, 45 minutes. Then it had a commentary with McTiernan and stuff like that. So it wasn't, uh, like I said, a stripped down version. It was worth it. Alfred, do you have a 4K of this? I have a 4K TV yet. So it's, how much do you do these days? Didn't even have a 4K of it. Like I'm sure. Like I feel like I've seen it, um, and then just never got it. Uh, not because I don't like the movie. Obviously, I like the movie, but it's just, uh, you know, there's so many 4Ks you can buy. You know, yeah. like, um, let's see, Predator 4K. They do. Uh, wait, yeah, they have a Predator 4 4 movie collection 4K. Nice. Which ones do they have? So they got Predator, Predator 2, Predators, and the Predator. Predators is good. So so it kept the uh, so it kept the um the alien versus predators, the two of those out of it, I guess basically. It has the other four. But it has uh for 30 bucks. That's a pretty damn good set. Yeah. Predators, I enjoyed that one too. Mm -hmm. I haven't seen I haven't seen any of them. Like I've seen Predator one and two, and that's it. So I, yeah. I would like to like go down that rabbit hole and watch all of them. And then maybe I'll, I'll report back to you guys on another episode about yeah. my journey and stuff. And maybe in the wraparound, we'll talk about that, you know, in the mm-hmm. wrap up episode, we'll talk about, you know, the journeys or whatever that we have, or, you know, after these episodes. Sure. Um, but yeah, I, uh, I, I picked this movie and I was looking at it and I was like, man, this looks really good. And then I was like, I never like for a movie made in 1987. This movie was fucking phenomenal, you know. Like it looked. I mean, just the scenes with like the um, 
the explosions happening all around and everything like the the fire and and even the um what normally would be like a cheesy cgi effect now with the um you know with the the stuff coming out like um, I don't know, I, whatever bullets that the Predator had, whatever that thing had, you know, laser thing. Um, those looked great, you know, mm-hmm. for 1987. This movie looks better than movies made now. You it know? <laughs> right? It, like, yeah, I, it, it looked it looked better than 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 Prey, to be honest. Not not knocking Prey, but I mean, it, it looked better than to me. It looked better than any of the other ones for the most part. I mean, all things considered. But, um, I think, you know, I think it's because they took a lot more time developing it, you know, mm-hmm. than they do nowadays because, like, everybody sort of knows, okay, this is what you do. This is how you do a predator. You know what I mean? Like, it becomes sort of, like, easy, you know, easy to do uh, when you've already done it, like, five, six times, you know? Like, mm-hmm. in the beginning, you're first doing it, you're taking a lot of, you want this to be really cool you know mm-hmm. huh. yeah well it, it, it's really like almost it, it, it's probably more the original of these type of movies but it's also it got um it's like two different movies also it's like it's got the the um, the 80s rambo-esque type of thing where they're attacking going trying to rescue people out of the village or or on that mission and stuff like that then it just completely goes off the rails into the, the whole predator in a good way it goes right. to a whole different film um, with, with the predator aspect of it once they deal with that. So for me, at first, it felt like an 80s film, um, it, uh, an 80s action film. And then it turned into something a little different, which was cool. It had like a little like apocalypse now feel to it in the beginning and shit and people running around mm-hmm. shooting, you know, and you're right. Rambo, like, you know, um, not not first blood first blood but the <laughs> the the other rambos where he's running around shooting all the you oh, know yeah. blowing everybody up and you know um having like rocket launchers and shit that i'm like really do you really do you do, do you need that you know like gratuitousness and in this it it was just cool i don't know it just brought me back to times where movies really they really cared about the making something fun you know um i think nowadays people just you know it's it's more about the blockbuster than it's about you know whether or not it's a fun movie um and i love john mctiernan he's one of my favorite uh action directors you know um this and die hard are like two of two of my favorites you know kind of october thing. was a nice it's good to um, for was, october Oh, Hunt for the Red October? Yeah. I haven't seen that in forever, but that was uh, Sean Connery, right? Yeah, he directed that too. So. Oh, okay. Yeah, that, yeah, that goes more into the, the, the serious stuff uh, in, in a good way, you know, in, a, in a really good way too. So, um, But yeah, I, I definitely enjoy his films. Um, uh, I like what they did here with how they had the different characters and how he really paid attention as a director to giving each of the characters a a uniqueness of their own um and i uh, gave them an opportunity to get their little niche couple lines in here or there and stuff like that that fit the perfect 80s thing mm-hmm. um, like uh, hawkins uh doing the uh doing jokes the whole time you know like he had a he had a thing about women with big pussies like i swear i don't mm-hmm. i don't know where that came from but like that was all he kind of i don't know that was weird. But it, but it was so funny. And then uh, to me, um, and this also hits back to when I was a child or a teenager when this came out, or um, uh, Jesse Ventura, because he was he's a wrestler and he was a wrestler and all. And um, they played this movie up because he was still like announcing and stuff like that in the WWF at the time. And um, he was talking about like how he was a bigger star than Arnold and stuff like that, just to play it up, you know, at the wrestling camp and stuff like that. But his character was so jesse the body ventura and just so and not non-pc with a couple of the comments he made but it was just i loved it and um yeah uh well i read a story where jesse was really excited when he got there to this the dressing room and the wardrobe mm-hmm. girl girl um, it showed that like his arms were apparently bigger than arnold schwarzenegger's and so they wanted to see who was whose one was actually bigger 
than the other. So they made a bet, like whoever lost had to, or whoever won got a bottle of champagne. Oh. And uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger won by cheating. He told the he told the wardrobe girl to tell him that his, her his arms were bigger. <laughs> I think funny. Jesse's actually was at that time. I mean. And see that fits that fits that time too with the with the way that because um at the time Jesse Ventura was having a lot of those type of spats with Hulk Hogan in the WWF, so it, it would fit perfectly. But then he made his transition to doing the movies and stuff like that as well. So um, yeah, him him battling with Arnold made sense. And you know him and Arnold were both governors. Yes, so that has yeah. two governors. Yeah, and, uh, I never yeah, thought of that. Yeah, yeah, Minnesota and California. Minnesota and California. Huh. I think but, um, that's really funny. Um, future governors. Who who ever thought literally that Arnold Schwarzenegger would be the governor of anything? Like, I think there was a joke in, I want to say, Demolition Man, yeah. where Arnold Schwarzenegger was like the president of the United States or something. They made and, an amendment that they could be a non-citizen to be president because of that. Right. And so <laughs> it was just... <laughs> Now, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised if that became a thing. People are changing yeah. laws left and right anyway. Why not? You know, make Arnold. They loved Arnold as the uh, uh, as the governor. They would definitely vote for him as a uh, president. You know, um, I mean, at this rate, I'd fucking vote for Arnold Schwarzenegger as president. <laughs> so I think that would be fucking fun. You know, this movie starts off. They have a really classic actor, R.G. Armstrong, is the general. He was in a lot of movies in like the 60s, even like in like Bonnie and Clyde or, or no, John Dillinger. He was in there. He was in a lot of them. I think he was in The Wild Bunch. And he was in a lot of West. I remember him. I remember one of his last movies was um, like Dick Tracy because he played Prune Face and Dick Tracy. He played who? Really? I think it was Prune Face and Dick Tracy, if I'm not mistaken. That's um, crazy. Yeah, yeah R.G. Armstrong. You can double check that. Correct me if I'm wrong. And then he's in a show but, called um, Millennium with Lance Hendrickson, and he had a big part in there. He's like the old man or something. I gotta check that because uh, I gotta. I, I I have not seen Dick Tracy in forever. I haven't either. I haven't seen it at all. You never no. seen Dick Tracy? I watch it one of these days. It's a classic. It's yeah. they really do uh, a great job. Yep, he played Proof Face. Um, he was well, also in El Dorado and Children of the Corn. Oh, it's uh, porn. Wow. Yeah, oh, they're okay. the first one. <laughs> um, but, um, then, but, uh, let's see. There was Carl Weathers in this also, which which yeah. was kind of funny seeing. Um, it was like it was like Apollo Creed uh, up against um uh, Arnold here. It was like it was like this is this seems like because they had that that scene where they were ar- like arm wrestling at the very beginning. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that was great because that was so 80s and so over the top with with the way that two of them acted and stuff like that with that sequence. But um, just the introduction of all them and just the the eighties, I don't say machismo type of d- demeanor that they had, um, perfect. It, th- that's sort of funny that you also mentioned before earlier that uh, you know the Rambo thing because you know Rambo was Sylvester Stallone, Arnold Schwarzenegger, you know, right, did his own thing, and then he's in this movie, and it sort of felt like a you know Arnold Schwarzenegger doing Rambo. You know, mm-hmm. like at the end of the movie, he's all alone, you know, taking mm-hmm. on this stuff by himself, yep. you know. Yep. So, I mean, it was pretty much Rambo, you know, a little and bit. He, and he and, and he um, and he made a comment. I think he's the one that said it, too. and kind of ties in with all the other stuff that they did um, more recent days. But um, uh, he made a comment that we're that we're all expendable or something like that. And mm-hmm. I was like, I was like, expendables. <laughs> I, <laughs> I saw I thought that, too. I was like, wait, you know, because they kept talking about and you know wasn't schwarzenegger in the first few expendables or is the second i think to varying degrees he's in all three of them if i'm not mistaken one of them is like he might just be a cameo but i think he's in all three of them as well yeah, yeah. bruce willis did two and that was it yeah then he then he wanted more money yeah he's bruce there, was, there was somebody that was in expendables two that was originally going to be in predator but i guess they filmed what a day or two and he, he's gone that's one of one of my favorites uh jean claude yes i heard that he, that they wanted yeah, him we, to be the predator because he could do martial arts yeah i believe he did a couple days of filming but it just didn't work out um, there's differing stories on why um, whether it was 
him not wanting that, that he was going to be in a costume and not be able to be seen or whether it just didn't work right. Um, Cause I mean, the costume, they changed the costume around. It was like what a couple hundred pound costume and everything. Yeah, so really was, nothing scary. Yeah, so, it's been really silly. Yeah. So, I mean, uh, John Claude in there would have been cool, but I mean, you wouldn't have seen him. I guess it would have been a totally different character because he would have been doing martial arts and all versus, you know, uh, honestly, you need a, you need a stunt guy in that co- a costume. Mm-hmm. That's why like, that's why Kane Hodder plays, you know, Jason, you know, or whatever, because you need somebody who's big like Kane Hodder. He could have been he could have been the predator at that time. I think, you know, you would have been he would have been a great predator, you know, honestly. Um, but he, you know, whatever, you know, Kane Hodder, somebody like that was huge. And you don't he doesn't need to show his face. You know, Jean-Claude, man, you put Jean-Claude in there. You Come on. You need to yeah, like. Yeah, because I think Kevin Peter Hall, the guy who played played it, was like what he said. He was like seven two or something like that. So yeah, he he fit the the dynamic of the Predator a lot more than what Jean Claude would have done. Now, interestingly enough, there was a character in the movie um, that was uh, was it? Uh, I'm gonna was it Bill, was it Bill Duke? Um, no, it wasn't Bill Duke, but Bill Duke was awesome in this movie. Oh, I, yeah. loved him. With, 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 I, I loved how he added that little razor thing because that, that was just cool. Yeah. It was a unique little character thing, just, just sitting there, just he had a, had a little disposable razor and just. Yeah, he was he was great. Um, OK, so the guy who played Pon- uh wait, was it Poncho or uh, Poncho? The guy who played Poncho in it, he uh, was also in a movie that I looked up just recently that just came out in like 2016. I've not seen it nor heard of it. And I want this movie so bad. I want to find it somewhere and do it for Indie Film Cafe at some point. It's called Beyond the Game. Uh, and it says like, who's the strongest man in the world? And I mean, let me, I'll say just the last names because that's all they have on this. And you'll know exactly who they are. Treo, Zane, <laughs> <laughs> Lister, Hugh, Van Dien, Jai White, Dacascus, Loken, Roberts, Kagawa, Gruner, I'm not, I'm not done, Mandalore, Cove, Bauer, Wilson, Asante, Todd, Sorbo, Madsen, Ling. It's all the last names that they have. They don't have the first yeah. names. And you know exactly, I think, yeah. every single person on there. Isn't that awesome? Like, that's a, that's got to be the biggest, like, craziest, like, action flick I've ever heard of, you know? Yeah, you have, you have to find that, uh, and, and uh, we have to review that for some some form, one of one of the shows somewhere. Oh, it's going to be Indie um, Film Cafe, because it's an indie yeah, that, film. So yeah, it's, yeah, yeah, that, and yeah. it's like a ultra crazy, like, sounding Indian, uh, indie yeah. film. Like, that's just, that right there just, you know, knocked me out, you know? Um, wow. Yeah. So when, when did you see um, Predator for the first time? Uh, Alfred, I want you to answer that first. Yeah. Oh, there you go. <laughs> While he's drinking his <laughs> coffee yeah, or whatever. Um, we, uh, once I'm in North Cary, North Carolina, Cary, North Carolina, visiting my grandparents. And um, when I'm going to the it was Saturday afternoon, so me, my dad, my uncle, my cousin, and my grandfather, we all went and saw it one afternoon, Saturday afternoon. And we were like, this is freaking amazing. I couldn't believe it, you know? And um, I was like, take, I was floored by that movie because it was just like, it came out. I think, I mean, I saw Aliens of the year before in the theater and it was just like, those are two, two of the defining movies of my, for my life um, in my forays in science, military science fiction. I remember seeing that and that was just, I mean, it was just so incredible. And then, when it came out on VHS, I remember you had a brand new, like, 24, a strict 24 hours. And um, and so I was trying to get two of my friends to watch it. And we were messing around out in the woods, and we came back, and I said, seven, and then 45 minutes into it, my mother, we got to take it back. Said, oh, where is it? I told you guys you would like the movie. And so ever since then, we watched it again. And um, <laughs> hey, that might be a couple times a year it comes on. I, I love that, like, 
I, I always loved going back and like watching something over and over again. Like when I was a kid, if I liked something, I watched it again, like right after I watched it, you know, right. I don't do that as much anymore. I don't know why it's, I don't know if that was just a kid thing that I did, but like. I think it was like someone said it's lack of content. That's all we had. Yeah, it's true. Like, Nowadays we have too much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. There's too much and not enough time to watch it. This, 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 right. see it all. Well, so it sounds like um, unless Moody has a curve to throw, it sounds like you're going to be the only one Alfred that's seen this in the theater um, because I didn't get to see this. I never saw this in the theater. I saw it on video working at Blockbuster um, right before mm-hmm. Predator 2 came out. So I, I was like just trying to catch up with different things. And, and I saw the first one. I was just like, wow, this is. The, it, so that was my introduction. So that, I saw it like about three years after it came out. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, so that was my introduction to it. And to be honest, I haven't seen it in its entirety probably in since like 92 or 93. So I've seen pieces here and there because it comes on TV a lot. But mm-hmm. from beginning to end, that was one setting last night was the first time in a while that I got to see it. And that was that was really good. Yeah. Um, I... I... <laughs> Uh, yeah, no, I did not see this in the theater because I would have been five, and I don't yeah. think my. <laughs> well, the way they they put them back out now, like um, repeats and stuff like that, because uh, you know for a while there there was nothing coming out in the theater, so I didn't know if maybe you had seen it over, over the years somehow on a special screening or something. Oh no, I mean, well, I have not no, and okay. um, and and no, I didn't see it the first you know first day it came out or either. Um, I. I don't even remember when the first time I watched it because like, once again, I was five when it came out. So this wouldn't have been something I'd be able to watch till I was like maybe 10 or 11, you know, because like at that time period is like when I was 10 is when I watched uh, Terminator two for the first time. Seven was when I watched RoboCop, you know? Well, well, like, well, well, in, in today's time period, the way we were talking about Disney plus and stuff like that, five-year-olds would be able to watch stuff like this in the future, maybe for better or worse. I mean, <laughs> well, their parents have to have it on like, uh, you know, uh, mature yeah, they, they, so that they can watch it, you know, or whatever. Because, I mean, that's the whole point of it coming to Disney Plus is like Disney Plus had to have uh, parental sort of control so they could do that. But, you know, yeah. um, I I really uh, I don't think I saw this. I I want to say. Probably when I was like a kid, it was on TV and I saw it. And then years later, not till like I was 20 something that I actually sat down and watched it because uh, like, I don't know, you know, I, I think in the, my twenties when I was working at my video store that I worked at, I was mm-hmm. on like kicks where I would go, you know, um, where I would go and rent, uh, you know, like I haven't seen this Arnold Schwarzenegger movie and I'd look it up on IMDb and then go, go rent it you know, and stuff or whatever. Um, but other than that, I have not, <laughs> you know, and it wasn't, wasn't like my favorite when I first watched it either, you know? Um, and I don't, I think it's once again, because a lot of it is a war movie and I don't really generally like war movies. Um, I get kind of bored after a while. Like I'm like, ah, oh, that guy got shot. Awesome. That guy got shot. Great. You know, right. Like it doesn't, it doesn't do anything for me as much. Uh, but this movie being half war movie and half like survival movie mm-hmm. and sci-fi survival movie really, I think, is what I like about it a lot more. Mm-hmm. You know, um, but you, it looks uh, like you're going to say something, Alfred. If you mentioned Poncho earlier. He was in a it was a really it was when they had a lot of like these new kind of revision series come out in the 80s. It was War of the World's Resurrection. It's a good twenty. He did like two, two or three seasons of it. But he played Colonel Iron Horse in the first season, and he was very good in that. Also, nice. That's yeah. awesome. Well, That's so funny that War, War of the Worlds have been around since like forever. <laughs> this is HG Wells, you yeah. know, like yeah. radio Even plays. In the 80s. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So what well, what I did when I'm uh, doing a little bit of looking stuff up before we were going to talk here on this, I. I was like, well, what was in the theaters and all that stuff about that time that was really big and popular and stuff and what, why maybe I didn't see it. And I looked at the um, and saw it was number one at the box office. It's opening week. It took the place of Beverly Hills Cop 2, which was number one for like four weeks in a row. And I had seen that in the theaters, um, uh, but it, it came out the same weekend as The Witches of Eastwick, which was 
another interesting film. Um, and um, The Untouchables was really big about that time. Yeah, well, that was so. a great movie. Yeah, so and um and funny thing is is another movie was um, in the top ten, same I believe the same guy because um uh, Harry and Hendersons. Oh nice. yeah, that was a fantastic movie. Yeah. Peter Hall yeah, did so, play Harry. Yep, yeah, and then an Ernest film was in there as well <laughs> in Platoon, but that was, that was basically about it. But um, it said the Predator was budgeted for fifteen million and it made um it only made like well only then about sixty million in the U.S. in its initial run. So. Uh, more than double that, it's uh you know yeah yeah so it made its money it, it more than made its money but um uh so yeah i always like to look at that and see what was going on about that time and maybe where I, what what i was doing at that time and i was like i remember seeing barrel hills cop in the theater as part two but uh, for some reason predator didn't stick i was i guess i was 15 so maybe um my parents wouldn't let me see that one but they let me see some other r-rated comedies like we've talked about before but right. but um but yeah but um uh, so uh, this one, to me, it's 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 perfect Arnold territory because yeah. um, uh, it was right after, uh, soon after Terminator, but it was before. Um, was it uh, uh, the one where he went to Russia and stuff like that with James Belushi, or, or he, he was Red a Russian Heat. guy? Yeah, Red, Red Heat. Heat. And then yeah, and then Twins came out about that time as well. Commando um, came so out in '85. There you go. That Commando was right before that. Yeah, with Bill Duke. Yeah. Duke uh, played uh, the uh, the bad guy who was with the guy from Warriors, taking him to taking him to the you know, uh, and then he escapes from those guys or whatever. And Wes from the Road Warrior was in it. Yes, yes. He had the mustache, he had the terrible mustache. Well, that was I'm, Freddie Mercury the first time I watched it. What's Freddie Mercury doing in this? <laughs> I'm surprised. Um, uh, what's his name? Vernon Wells. Uh, was the the was from. Uh, road warrior and commando i'm surprised he wasn't the jesse ventura part you know like i'm not i'm surprised that like yeah. Arthur Schwarzenegger wasn't like having you know saying john you should work with this guy and this guy and this guy from commando you know and the the, the predator should be dan hadaya and you know. and then the guy from dreamscape uh Dan, Dan Hadaya, I, I I'm not sure, no, but the, I know the, the short guy Sully from Warriors and Oh yeah, that's um Dreamscape. Yeah, I think yeah, he was great in Warriors and he was great in um uh, as Sully in um Commando, right? Yeah, yeah, uh, it was fantastic. I loved him. Like he's such a, he's such a asshole, you know. Yeah. Like he does that like character very well even to the point of i saw him on like law and order special victims unit and he played a like just a uh i think he was dying and he was still an asshole to everybody uh -huh. you know like he had raped women and shit and all this other crap and i'm like why does he always play like roles where he's like like despicable you know i guess that it's typecasting you know yeah david patrick kelly that was his name yes it no, oh, that's the, guy from, uh, that's the guy from that's the guy from like um isn't he the guy from like Ford Fairlane and the Crow and stuff like that? Yes, I think so. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. yeah he's um, been in a lot of stuff. He's a great actor. Yeah. I but yeah. I always know him as the Warriors come out to play guy. You know, <laughs> Warriors come out to play. <laughs> you know, which is hilarious to me. It's just, it's just, yeah. So I want to. You know, I love the Warriors too. That was one of my favorites. Um, not many people talk about it. You know, and I know it was going to be remade, but I was like, "How? Like, you can't modernize a movie like that." There are no real. There's gangs just shoot each other now. They don't. They don't pull bats out and shit. You know, <laughs> like you know, they just shoot each other. The movie would be over in like a minute. You know, like everybody would just be shooting each other. <laughs> Um, Speaking of shooting each other, the, the assault in the compound is one of the most intense action sequences I've seen in a film in a long time. Mm -hmm. Big battle there. And then, of course, you've got the, everyone's got their, like, you know, some of us are dug in like an Alabama tick, you know, and knock, knock, and you know, all these things. Oh, God. I, I was laughing my ass off with the knock, knock, and then the, um, what was the other one? Um, it was like, uh, Stick around. Stick around. Oh, God. 
I was like, really? He had to, he has to say, like, who in other than Arnold Schwarzenegger in that time period would have one liners when they're actually, you know, like, in the middle of shooting people, you know, you don't have time to think of one liners, you know. Well, so well, funny, that's, like, that, that's, 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 well, go ahead. I was just gonna say one of the, the cla- lines that just got cracked every time I hear him say, It's like, Billy, find me a way out of this hole. <laughs> we afraid just we laugh at it every time. It's like, He said, Hole. <laughs> <laughs> I'm thinking of one of the lines when, um, uh, when Jesse Ventura got shot, and, and the guy was like, Man, you're bleeding. He's like, I ain't got time to bleed. Yeah. <laughs> and the other guy's like, okay. <laughs> but, but yeah, I know, right? And the, the thing was, is Bill Duke's character really, it, it really came across that he felt that he lost his buddy when, mm-hmm. when, um, cause he was like, I'm going to go avenge, avenge my guy's death and stuff like that. So, it re- so I mean, it, it had the comedy from the one liners and stuff like that, but it also did transition to, like they were really afraid or really caring and really there was depth to the characters. One of my, my least favorite scenes in the movie, but it was a cool scene. Like I loved this scene, but like, it just drives me nuts is the scene where he sees where Bill Duke sees the uh, predator and starts shooting at him. And then everybody comes in and starts shooting. I'm like, you're wasting your bullets. Yeah. Like, stop! Like, if he, it, you know, like, if he ain't dead after like a few times, then there's no, you know, like, what are you doing? It, yeah, it's just that's, that that's that's eighties over the top. I yes. know that scene just drove me nuts. I was like, stop shooting! This is going way too long. Like, and then they'll they'll be replacing their guns and bullets, and I'm like. You're wasting more bullets for something that doesn't matter, you know. And, 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 and it's a, that big machine gun, mini gun. Exactly. <laughs> but at the same time, when they were doing all that ex- extravagant, over the top stuff, they actually seemed like the way that they slid on down on the ground and now um, going into the next to the next spot and so. I mean, it really seemed like they were really into the production, and the production was. Um, really intense it seemed just and from a couple things like I've, I've i've read on it that they said that this was shot and they had there was like live like scorpions and all sorts of ticks and everything like oh, that God. It was really that was really there it was like one of the worst production environments you could possibly be in who was the mexican this? jungle there was a mexican jungle yeah like that little teeny tiny scorpion that uh bill duke gets um or whatever um I just I don't know what that was necessarily. Was that was that just like a mini scorpion? I don't know, but like they really did a good job because I don't think they killed that thing on, you know, in the film. But it looked like they did. You know, it looked like they squished some kind of thing. So they did a really good job with that. Yeah, and the, and the like predator the fall too. One of the cool things, anyway, is like you sort of you keep playing all the the voices. Like, turn around. Turn around. <laughs> Yeah, because it because it looked like it was like, is he going to stab him in his shoulder or something? <laughs> and then it was like he was really trying to help him and stuff like that. And then, of course, the predator was watching all this stuff or experiencing because it showed him from a distance when the guy um, um, smushed it under his foot, the, under the boot. I was just like, Ugh. I know, yeah, I, I just I look, I'm I'm a lover of animals, but. I mean, I'm sorry. I'd probably squish it too if it were on me, you know, or whatever, because I would not want that thing to potentially bite me or whatever and, and kill me. I don't know how poisonous or dangerous that thing is, you know. Yeah, um, snakes, 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 and scorpions is about that. I, I, I uh, yeah, it's it. All bets are off if those things come near me. Right. <laughs> I'd be all, it'd be all. Um, yeah. Um, uh, now, another one that I ca- thought was interesting, who did a voice, was um, uh, the voice of the predator. Peter Cullen did the voice and he, he's the guy who did um, uh, the voice, some stuff with King Kong, I believe. And he also did mm. Optimus Prime in the animated and as well as the movies. Oh, wow. Um, but uh, he's like a voice actor. Um, but he came up with that clicking noise because he's um, he said he did research on how he, he thought over the years and um, how it would sound because he was like, I have no idea. So he created that clicking type of noise, which can be annoying to be honest but it i actually like it i mean it doesn't bother me like um it, it felt weirder in this one like i think later it became more clicking you know mm-hmm. but it didn't sound as clicking in this one it sounded a little bit 
uh, different. Uh, I, I think the more they started messing around with um, uh, Predator, you know, the, the Predators, you know, they kind of mm-hmm. start, it kind of evolves into, you know, and all you know is like, you know, like you hear it and you're like, oh, that's, that's the Predator. You know, right? But it's like it's like it's like mimicking their voices too, or repeating it, or something. And it, I guess that's to communicate to wherever, or just to register. I'm not I'm not 100 percent on that, but um. Well, it, they used it later. He uh, the you know at the end he started just repeating every but what everybody was saying. Then he has that laugh at the end, you know, mm-hmm. uh, and that was just so creepy. Like that scene. Uh, I I actually love that that scene. Let's talk about the ending. Basically, the ending is just so nuts. Like him, like basically a Schwarzenegger versus the Predator for like fifteen minutes. You when know, he, when he muddies when he muddies himself all up, Muddy, muddies himself all up, realizes that they, uh, well, I guess he he figures out that the thing can't see in the dark real well or whatever you know so he blends in just like the thing blends in you know or whatever and so he blends in and then he like thing can't see him and so even the uh the predator starts uh to do the same thing they did which is just start shooting at every whenever he can you know i'm like once again you're wasting ammo stop it you know like even that drove me nuts I'm like, oh my goodness. Um, but anyway, he ended up doing that, and then um, they f- they actually literally fought for a while or whatever. You know, I thought that was pretty cool. What did you think of the ending, uh, Alfred? I enjoyed it, but you know, back then it was like it was so cool because I mean, it's just like, what's he gonna do? How's he gonna do it? And they're trying to get it to go down to that one trap. He says, "Come on, you want me?" And he's like, "Oh, I ain't going down there." Said, oh crap! What do I do now? <laughs> Not just that, the dude figured out the predator figured out a way to go around. Yeah, you know, he was too smart. He's like, Nope, I'm not falling for that. <laughs> I don't see. He's like, Oh, shit. <laughs> yeah, he's like, Yeah, because I think he was setting up traps or yeah, something he was. like himself. So the predator was like very smart, like going, mm. You know, if I can set up traps, this guy is setting up yeah. a trap, you know, because he's like, The whole good. time, he's like, Go on, kill me. Kill me now! Yeah. <laughs> you know? And then uh, the new goes uh, nuclear and yeah, and then but oh. he set the trap up and the thing just knocked him down and and me no- knowing how many horror movies where they just think the killer is dead, I'm like, come on, come on, he's not dead. <laughs> that well, that so would kill the predator. Well, that would kick the weapon out of the lady's hand if they knew like she picked it up and she would be fair game right um but then he like blows himself up or something or whatever yeah. i don't like i'm like why did he sacrifice himself the predator like with think, a big ass mushroom cloud i think the rule is not to get captured i i guess but you know kind of I don't know, did like, because I haven't seen Predator Two in forever. Does it explain about the first Predator? Does anybody remember? I I, oh. I don't remember the second one at all. I mean, it, it, like I said, that it's been thirty years since I've seen any of that. Uh, Let's set up the um, basically kind of gives them some background. They've been coming here for a long time, and one of the ties to I understand from Prey is, is like it gets a um, Danny Glover gets like a kind of like a black powder pistol. And it's supposed to be, they said it maybe from Prey, not back then, but now. And they had an alien skull in the spaceship. And, mm. and so they're setting up the ends of the Predator stuff. But it was, a, it was an entertaining movie. I mean, it had this Predator with Gary Busey, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, Danny Glover, if I could yeah, Danny up, Glover. You know, yeah. So and not Morton Carl Net- Weathers, <laughs> but Danny Glover this time. Warren Downey yeah. Jr. and Michael, uh, not Michael Bean, but... um. The guy, um, wait, hey, Robert Paxton. Downey Jr. was in part yeah, two, Morton, 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 Morton. Morton. Uh, and I think it's on Bill Paxton, Bill Paxton, Paxton. 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 yeah. Oh, Jesus, yeah. it's like aliens, you know, like, yeah. <laughs> um, that's awesome. Um, I need to rewatch that. Uh, once again, I have it so I can uh rewatch it. Um, uh, so yeah, so that that's crazy. I uh, I do remember her saying, remember the girl said, 
um, that uh, Anna uh, mentioned that like whenever it's hot, like these monsters come come back or something like every whatever so often. And I wonder if that's if that was ever like expounded upon in like the comics or the mo uh, or the movies. You know, like is that true or is that just her mythical? Like talk and there's nothing. To I do believe so because Predator Two was it was like a, California was like a thousand degrees, it was like 115 degrees, 120 degrees, so it was boiling hot. So like the predators just know like oh that looks like a hot planet, yeah, you know, hot planet issue. You know, let's go down there and hang like out. Weather man. Yeah, the uh, weather predator. The weather predator. You think? Like, yeah, there's there's a guy on the ship checking the weather. You know, oh, that planet's the planet's the hottest right now. Let's go down yeah. there. You know, I mean, Mars is pretty hot, right? Like, all, a lot of the, the planets are pretty hot, right? I think one's close to the sun. They should go over to those ones, you know, um, unless it's too so hot. You're, so, so you're saying Mars and all that, so he should be doing like the predators should go mess up with Total Recall or something? Yeah. I mean, if you're you if you're already going to do Terminator, <laughs> you might as well go to Total Recall, too. Go to all of uh, Arnold yeah. Schwarzenegger's classics, you know, yeah. Um, in, end of days, you know, the predator oh, there, versus yeah. Satan, you know, <laughs> I mean, why not? Um, but yeah, I, I don't know. I, I, I loved, you know, I, I loved rewatching this. Like it was so much fun. Like I said, it, it made me want to rewatch, rewatch the second one and all the other ones too. Mm. Um, and because this is a universe, you know, this is a universe that, um, I feel like, I don't know. The only problem I have thinking about it is that so many different people are involved, you know, like Robert Rodriguez was involved at one point producing, you know, I think it was the predators or something. Predator. You know? Predator. Predators. Okay. Predators. Okay. Well, uh, and then uh, Shane Black, who was, uh, who played Hawkins in this one, but had, I don't think he had anything to do with uh, the writing. Um, it was uh, on IMDb is not credited as a writer. Um, so the unless, Predator, he wrote it directly. Right? Which one? The Predator. Right. So he came back just to to work on that one, right? But he so. didn't. You know, it's not like he expounded on his character or anything and uh, do anything. No. You know, uh, obviously his characters. Character was the first one to die of the group. I'm so sad. Like I was like, I liked him. I wanted to hear some more random pussy jokes. You know, like there's two of them, and there were two big pussy jokes. You know. Yeah. Well, that uh, the what we're talking about with all these characters is why this one stands out more so than the others. Not just because it's the original, but also, I mean, you can't get the care. A lot of the sequels, it's just the people are kind of dismissive. I mean, it's just sort of like, yeah, it's just another body, it's just another body. These people had some memorable traits to them, at least. And, mm -hmm. and I think that that's what, that's what kept this, keeps this one so esteemed by so many people and why we're talking about it today. What, 35 years after it's coming yeah. out. 35, Jesus Christ. It's almost 40. You know? I know, I had to quickly do the math there. I was like, 87, that's, yeah, 35 years. That's crazy. That it's that's been crazy. That long. Yeah, I, it doesn't feel like it. You know, like it doesn't feel like it's thirty-five years old because, like, rewatching it almost feels like it could be made today, like this. Mm -hmm. You know, um, in fact, if they, I mean, I, I kind of miss movies like this. Um, so, back in the eighties uh, and nineties, there were tons of movies with like uh, commandos in the, you know, in the woods fighting probably mm -hmm. each other mainly you know um but this one uh there was there's a movie uh that we reviewed for indie film cafe called uh polymorph and it had an alien in the woods you know dealing with other people you know or whatever so it, it's uh, you know so it was a good good flick um and i, I like that yeah polymorph you should i mean like there should be more movies with with uh, people stuck in the woods dealing with an alien being, you know, that actually is kind of, you know, like it doesn't necessarily have to have commandos and an Arnold Schwarzenegger type person, you know, or whatever, you know, but you have to outwit the, you know, the alien beast, you know. Um, uh, but this was, I mean, I don't know. I really enjoyed this one as opposed to 
like a lot of different movies in that time period that were kind of blah you know this was this definitely holds up um so alfred did you rewatch this oh so before we started i started watching it again i've seen this so many times i can pretty much recite the whole movie (laughs) yeah you were were pretty much doing that so i'm I'm not you know i'm not surprised um joe so you you said you rewatched it right before just yeah yeah i watched it last night um for the first time and in one setting, like I said, in 30 years, I'd seen, seen pieces of it because it comes on, it comes on TV a lot, stuff like that. And whenever it's on, you got to watch here or there anyways. Um, but, but yeah, so this was, it was like a fresh, fresh viewing for me. So that was, it was kind of cool to see it. It was, it was a fresh viewing for me too. And I was, I was happy and I'm glad that they're all on Hulu and stuff, you know, that just makes it easier for me to do that instead of having to go and buy everything, you know, again, or whatever. Um, yeah. So and I'm suggest- not expecting a whole lot, but Predator Two, I'll, I'll be watching that. I'm uh, I'm not going to jump at it, but it's 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 since it's available and stuff, and I think I got it on DVD as it's well. It's a fun so. one to watch. Yeah, yeah, uh, I I remember watching it because I bought it on Blu-ray with the the double feature, and mm-hmm. uh, you know I was like, oh, I've never seen Predator Two. I've seen Predator One, you know, a few times. So let me watch Predator Two. So uh, me and my buddy Vittorio. Uh, who I know you met, Joe. Have you met him, uh, Alfred? I don't yeah. think so. Yeah. Um, my buddy Vittorio and I, uh, we we sometimes on Sundays would watch, you know, movies together or whatever. Uh, I think we're going to think we're going to start watching the Andor series together and stuff um, when he comes over on Sundays uh, for now because he doesn't have Disney Plus. So this is the, the way for him to watch it, you know. There you go. Um, but we were, you know, we watched uh, Predator 2, and I was like, this is pretty damn good. Like, it's a damn good sequel. And um, there really isn't that many, like, it took three or four years or something. I don't know when uh, Predator 2 came out. I think it was 1990, I'm going to say. Yeah, yeah it, it was 90, because um, it hit video in 91, and that's when I was in Blockbuster, and that was just, everybody was after that movie at the video store. <laughs> um, See, that's funny. I, I it, by the time I worked at a video store, all that, like, you know, yeah, that was all gone. So there was so, uh, people, yeah, people, people would camp out at the video store and like, can you check the Dropbox for this or that? Because I mean, it was because the movies were so expensive. They were mispriced to where you couldn't you couldn't buy them right away. Oh, so, no. VHSs were like freaking like 40 yeah, they were like bucks. 90 bu- yeah. 90 well, bucks. At one time, at one time, yeah, they were like 90 bucks. So it's like they're priced. They call it a price for rental. So. Very few things came out priced for sale, and much less a movie that'd be R-rated. Um, I right. think the first one that was that was more adult that came out was probably like *Lethal Weapon* two or or something like that. That was one of the first ones that, that came out sell price, but everything else was priced just to rent. So people mm-hmm. would come in and rent it forever and a day, and they'd be like, check, "Check the Dropbox, check the Dropbox," because it's just that's that was the time period that we were in. Now it's like you just dial it up. I do. Re- I remember that. Like I don't know what movies particular, but. Like, I would be like, oh, that movie's checked out. And they'd be like, nope, check the Dropbox. See if there's there's a copy in there. And there might be. There might be. But usually, sometimes there wasn't. I'm like, I'm sorry. You know, like, but man, if you were the first one to grab it when it was in the Dropbox, you were so fucking happy. I remember that time. You know, I, I kind of miss. I yeah. I watched a, um, a little thing on YouTube about... Um, uh was it a, it was about netflix and how netflix existed and everything and netflix killed fucking blockbuster you know uh, mm-hmm. mainly and they tried to buy out blockbuster which kind of would have been cool maybe if there was like netflix stores you know well block, block, blockbuster had a chance to buy out netflix at the infancy of netflix and they said no the the mail by mail is and streaming is not the future blockbuster screwed up and then then eventually it turned the other direction and netflix said no and then blockbuster just went under ultimately yep. but yeah, yeah. So, it's kind of yeah, sad I definitely, but... yeah definitely missed those those the commute the communion communication of a bunch of people just communion all sitting there just talking movies in a video store and stuff like that now it's through chats or whatever but the face it doesn't stuff feel is, the same is, yeah it's different yeah. You know, obviously there wasn't podcasting back then either, so there wasn't people who could do reviews or do talk with, you know. Fucking podcasting is now on IMDb, by the way. You can you can really? put your podcast on IMDb. Oh, wow. 
as like a podcast series you know i did not know that until i looked up uh i, I looked up uh marvel's uh wastelanders and uh it's a, a, a podcast series and it pops up as a podcast series and i was like that's kind of cool uh, a friend of mine when i told them i put nd film cafe on uh there they laughed at me because uh they said you, you know that's a podcast it's not a you know that's that's not uh that's not a film you shouldn't be on imdb and ha, they're wrong well but wait wait isn't like talk shows and stuff like that are on imdb it's yeah just, it's, 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 it's a tv so it's just another it's the future of of, of our the way, the way things go i mean it's not you know um as like media like media is still so very new you know what i mean like it's going to be one of those things where people are going to um uh like it's still they're still catching up to things mm-hmm. you know and yeah. they're trying to figure out okay podcasts are really big right now and in fact if your podcast has like over like say you know um thir- 20 million subscribers something like that right something ridiculous like that hollywood wants you you know, because that's just automatic people that they can bring over to Hollywood, you know, right? But if you have like, you know, five subscribers, you know, you're pretty screwed in that, you know, in that world or whatever. Um, anywho, uh, I guess, is there anything else? Did we miss anything? Um, we were talking, I think we talked about it before the, the chat here, but we never really talked about the chopper. Oh, yeah, um, the chopper. <laughs> yeah, I have a thing there that says I don't always have a chop up, but when I do, I get to it. And that's uh, you know, get to the chopper is actually um his favorite catchphrase, you know. Um uh Arnold this, Schwarzenegger. Uh, this is pop culture, it's like live long and prosper, like, get to the chopper. Yeah, everybody yeah. knows that. Like if you say that line to somebody, they know it's from Predator. You know, even like think- I'll be back, they know from you know Terminator, you know, like so what are you I, think say, he, he, I think he said it three times in the film, but then the others said it as well, I believe. But um, he, I think he said it three times. And um, Alfred, you can correct me if I'm wrong there, because uh, you know <laughs> a word by word for the film, line by line. But I think he said it three times in the film uh, that I remember anyways. Um, but but yeah, so it's, it's, it's a great line because it, it fits the 80s, it fits him, and it fits the film. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Um, so I guess, yeah, so we, we talked about that. I mean, there were iconic lines. We talked about his one liners, you know, like, um, you know, uh, uh, God damn, I can't even think right now. The, uh, like knock, knock and, uh, you know, uh, stick around, the, stick around all those silly. Isn't he a neat bit of tribute? Sven Ulf Orson, who kind of pops up in a lot of his movies, he's in Comey and, um, uh, uh, Running Man. He he played the one of the the big um brutish Russian guys or Cuban guys beginning beginning. He's one of the big um big soldiers there. So he, he has a he played he had a big part in Thirteenth Warrior. Always plays like a big Nordic kind of guy. Sven Olthorsen. Um yeah, that's crazy. So uh, he was king of like those things at that time. Yeah, yeah. you know, you know the two minutes in a movie huh. right um was it uh, also i used to remember there was a thing um i forgot what it was called like e-bombs world or something where you could get like clips sound clips from his stuff that you could do pranks with so people would do pranks with arnold schwarzenegger and with all his lines and some of them were from predator like you know get to the choppa or uh uh you son of a bitch you know, yeah, right? Yeah. And stuff like that. And it's just so funny. Also, we forgot to mention the music uh, was wonderful, uh, done by Alan Silvestri, I think is that how you say his name. Yeah, and that was the hardest soundtrack to. I don't think they really said, I was looking for that soundtrack for years, and all of a sudden it was on YouTube. It's just like, I was trying, I could find Predator 2 song or soundtrack, score and soundtrack, but I could never find, which I owned on audio cassette. Predator was damn hard to find. And then finally, I was able. To, I think it's on YouTube now. But before, I was like, damn, I couldn't find it because I love the music for it. And I don't know if it was ever released. 
or what? I, I'm wondering, like, because so there's that one song in the beginning, um, like the old baby song. I forgot what, how to. Um, oh, no, a little Richard, I believe. Yeah. yeah. And then, uh, and then uh, later the guy Sally. actually sings it. So I'm wondering if, like, that was, like, written into the script, you know. Long Tall Sally. Long Tall Sally, yeah. And I wonder if that was actually written to the script that they uh, did that because uh, because obviously he's, you know, like when uh, most people don't know this, maybe that might, you know, don't know anything about film. Most of the time you film this stuff, then you put the music in afterwards. So when people are like listening to a song, they have no idea what, what song they're really listening to, you know, because it just depends on what song you can get the rights to. Now, Hollywood has an easier shot at getting, you know, Little Richard as opposed to like if we made a movie right now and we right. were like, hey, let's get the rights to Little Richard's uh, Long Kong Sally or whatever. And I, that'd, I be our, that'd be our budget. That yeah. would be that would be literally the budget of the film, but just I mean, probably more than the budget of the yeah, film, exactly, yeah. you know. Um, so, yeah, we you know, but Hollywood, you said this was like 15 million. That was probably just a teeny tiny bit of the budget, you know, more mm -hmm. more so the budget went to like paying Arnold Schwarzenegger and Jesse Ventura and all these people who were Carl Weathers at that time was a huge star, you know. Um, he's still sort of a huge star, but he's kind of he he's been in an asylum movie. He he's he can't you know like well he's a, he's in the Star Wars series now. He, he's in one of those the, the yes. Star Wars series. Yeah. Isn't he in Mandalorian? Yeah, yeah. I think it's Mandalorian. Yeah. yeah. So he's uh yeah I'm I'm happy to uh for him because I I always love Carl Weathers um fucking Apollo Creed you know Action Jackson Action Jackson. Jackson. I saw that for the first time about a year or so ago. <laughs> I don't know how I missed it in the eighties, but it just, uh, yeah. It's been forever yeah. since I saw it, but I do remember renting it at the video store, you know, um, Jesus, you know, it's so funny to go back. See, that's why I like doing all these eighties stuff because what, well, you that, know, that'll probably, be, you know, it'll probably be a running theme for throughout our discussions for these next few, few episodes. Yeah. Like, you know, what did, because uh, the next movie, we'll talk about that in a second. The next movie I've never even seen yet. So it's going to be completely new to me. I, I own it on DVD, but I haven't ever seen it. So, uh, Alfred, would you like to explain to everybody what the next one is? We were watching John Foreman's um, Excalibur, which came out in 1980 and was a launching point for several stars, including Helen Marion and Patrick Stewart and a few other folks. And it's a night, and it's the, it's the world of King Arthur through the lens of um, John Borman. It was a beautiful film, movie, and it just it had a huge impact on me. And it was just, a, it's just going back to, it's just, it's a, it was a, an epic with no special effects, practically. Everything was shot on, what you see on the camp film is what they used. They couldn't use it. If they couldn't shoot it out there, then they wouldn't be in it. And it's just an amazing film. And I've watched it years later. I haven't seen the making of it on Prime, and then I rented it, bought it again, and then I was just like, wow, it took me back. I didn't see it in like 20 or 30 years. Well, we were talking about it the other day uh, with Joe, me, and uh, Paul at uh, the studio, and Paul wants to come on the show uh, because he was talking about doing it for Film Freaks, but he was so mad because you decided to do it first, and mm -hmm. I was like, you know, you could have picked it for any of your other times, you know, that's not our fault, you know, and then uh, he also claims he doesn't think it's a Hollywood film or whatever, and I'm like, it was made in Hollywood, you know, like, it's not, it counts. It oh, it was made in England. Okay, but is it a, it's Hollywood produced, right? I guess. <laughs> well, we will go with it anyway. If not, I'll do Conan the Barbarian. No, no, no. Don't don't change it. We keep it keep it Excalibur. We wanna we wanna do that and we'll just talk about that. But you yeah. know, uh, it's funny because some of my shows, you know, like um 
I did, uh, was it Frozen, um, the Adam Green's Frozen for uh, horror film lovers. And everybody was like, this isn't a horror film. This is a suspense thriller kind of thing, you know, right? So sometimes it can be a little off, but it's, right. it's got Hollywood cast members. Yeah. So we'll keep it at that. Hollywood Boulevard, um, you know, doesn't necessarily, doesn't have to necessarily mean it's a Hollywood, Hollywood movie. It's not, right. doesn't have to be a mainstream film. Um, gotcha. You know, uh, like James Bond like, movies would be, and it, it, it launched a lot of Hollywood stars. Yeah. yeah. So there yeah, at you least go. two these just off the top. Yeah. And I think John Borman did do Hollywood movies too. Like this might not necessarily have been the that one, but you know, it's it's yeah. a you know, it it works, you know, for us. Um, I've always told Paul he could still do you know, Scalibur later at some point, mm. you know, uh, on uh, Film Freaks, because that's it's complete video, not just, you know, audio. So we can do the Guy Ritchie version of it. The Guy Ritchie version? Yeah. <laughs> was that King Arthur? Yeah, Arthur. No, no, that was that was um, um, the guy from Children of Men, Arthur. King Arthur was. No, he did. Uh, he did King Arthur in the like the. Uh... The legend of the something sword or something Guy Ritchie did, and then he uh, had uh, Charlie Hunnam as um yeah uh, as uh, King Arthur. Um, There's one called Arthur with Clive Owen playing Arthur, and in, in like four, it was part of the Roman stuff by the four hundred. That was a good been, movie. There's been so many King Arthur movies, you know, um, but you know. I mean, it's sort of a it's it's a fun legend to do. Yeah, and I like to see I like to see different versions. So I'm excited to see Excalibur. You know, um, looking forward to just to discussing it. Yeah, um, and then uh, do you have your idea yet, uh, Joe, or do you are you still working on uh, yours? I'm I'm still I'm still working on it. Um, the one I was going to pick actually came out in '78, so I'll have to defer to a different one and use that for when we do a '70s film or some '70s. Theme. Awesome. So um, mm-hmm. I'll, I have to think of I have to think of a different one, but that's I have a couple ideas. Perfect. All right. Well, I think that about wraps it up. Um, thank you guys so much for this episode, and everybody else. Thank you guys for checking this out. Uh, make sure to get to the chopper. You know, um, <laughs> I was going to throw that in there again. Get to the chopper. But you got it. <laughs> Uh, I mean, it was it was literally always been my favorite line. Like, I just I love it. I want to, you know, I, I, I want to have it forever, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, and this is a movie. This is somebody wrote in a um, uh, in a review. This is a timeless sci fi action film. And I agree. It's timeless. Sure. Like, literally, you could watch this probably in 50 years from now. And Mm -hmm. still get something from it. Like, you know, it's not going to be like, people are going to be like, oh my God, I don't understand what's going on here. Like, why are these people walking in the woods? Like, we don't use the woods anymore. You know, it's not going to be like that, you know, like, right? Like, there's always going to be the military. There's always going to be, you know, the idea of of the aliens coming to visit because until they actually literally do, you know, we're not going to, um, you know, we're not going to see that. So, yeah, and, and 50 years from now, when when people are getting ready to see Predator 16 or something like that, they'll still go back to the original. Uh, yeah. Um, hey, sorry about that. My uh, storage ran out. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. So we are uh, finishing this up right now. Uh, pretty much, we're already done, but. Uh, we have to actually say goodbye. So uh, thank you guys so much for, for joining us today. And uh, thank you guys for coming on. And we'll be back on in Oct- uh, wait November for a brand new episode. So until My then, pleasure. what? My pleasure. Glad to be back. Yes. And you, Joe, too. Like, thank you so much. Um, thank you. This is a good one. Looking forward to the next one as well. Yep. So all right, everybody, have a good one. And Jeez. bye. Right, bye.
for listening to the Hollywood Boulevard podcast.